Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is, is the headline, Israel is attacked, America sends troops. Is that headline about to be fulfilled? Now, <laughs> before I start, I want to give a public shout out to Benice. Now, she's probably shocked that I just said her name on our program, but she is the one that does a lot of the editing. Okay, so I do the research. I put together the PowerPoint and I do the talking, but it would just <laughs> it would just be that without her. It would just me be me, and I don't even know how to put the PowerPoint together. But she spends oh three four hours every day putting this into a nice format, so it is easy and pleasant to watch. And she takes out my coughs and my hacks and my mistakes. And so thank you for Benny or to Benice for all that you do. Okay, so. Is the headline, Israel attacked, America sends troops about to be fulfilled. Now, for those of you new, let me explain to you what we're talking about, and then I'm going to show you some startling information. Okay, so let's start with April 15th, 2002. I've covered this many times. I hope you have written down these words. If you have not, you've made a big mistake. So April 15th, 2002, my wife, Prophet Leslie, had a dream, and in this dream, it told her these six things. One, that Arafat, as in Yasser Arafat, would go into the hospital and die there. Well, at the time, Arafat wasn't allowed outside of his uh, compound, so to put that out on uh, the internet and also to our very best supporters, that was a very big risk. But about two years later, at 11.11.04, at 3.30 a.m., just as she was told, Arafat died in the hospital. That means all of the rest of these words are all confirmed. Two, that Israel will give the Palestinians a state. Now, that's a very big statement, too, because even right now, that is the issue. Because Israel's saying, that we're, we're not going to give the Palestinians a state. And it seems like all the rest of the world says you have to give the Palestinians a state. Well, she's saying that Israel, actually, she's not saying, the Lord is saying that Israel will give the Palestinians a state. And, you know, maybe I should jump in here with another thought just popped in my mind. So you may be saying, so why would God give Prophecy Club, through Prophet Leslie, such a very, very important piece of information? So I'll tell you. It was June the 14th of 2008. I had set up an 18-city speaking tour from Beaumont all the way up into Minneapolis, talking about the fall of America, also uh, oil in Israel, and we were at that time offering stock. We're not offering stock for sale right now. We hopefully will one day, hopefully soon, but I'll let you know. Anyway, <clears throat> so after I went to bed that night, I, I spoke in Amarillo, after I went to bed that night, I said, Lord, I hope you're pleased with what we're doing. Because it's not going so good. We're spending $3,500 per seat in advertising. Not many people showing up. Not many people getting saved. Not many people interested in investing in oil in Israel. And that night he spoke to me. I mean, I heard audible words and they said, quote, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. Unquote. Not the quotes. It just said the words. And I answered back. I said, the oil well in Israel? But there was no response. It was like, son, that's all I'm going to say to you. <laughs> but, now, I don't normally go into the rest of this, but it ties with this. So the rest of the evening, it was like I was sitting in a, a desk when I was in, like, elementary and junior high school, how I had desks. It was like I was sitting in a desk, and he took me to school all night long. And I guess he was putting something into my spirit because the only thing I can remember from the rest of that evening was I saw Leslie standing, you know, like you hold a newspaper, standing in front of our fireplace right now that we have, holding up these newspapers. I saw her and he said, when the prophecies I gave your wife begin to come to pass, people from all directions will begin to turn and listen to your ministry. Because I've often wondered how in the world, because right now most people don't listen to me. They don't listen to what I have to say. They don't listen to the warning that I bring. They don't like Demetri Dudeman. They don't like none of this stuff. Even other ministries. 
I guess I'm about the only one ever talks about him anymore. So I wonder how in the world we're ever going to get to a sports stadium filled with people like he's shown me in one dream and one vision. This is it. When these prophecies, that's what he said, when these prophecies, I gave your wife, begin to come to pass. And that's what I saw holding up newspapers of these as headlines. I saw it. Okay. This is confirmed. This is in red granite, like the Ten Commandments. You can take this to the bank. You should write this down. These are the headlines leading to the fall of America. Okay, so let's go on. Israel will give the Palestinians a state. The Palestinian state will be a temporary measure to allow the Israelis time to strengthen the military. But what strengthens the military? I think the next one tells us. Oil will be discovered in Israel. And I think I know who is going to discover the oil in Israel. I think I know the exact scripture that tells me where it's located. And then a selection of about four other scriptures, when you understand what they're saying, tells me how deep. So I know where to drill. I know how deep to drill. And on October the 28th of 2001, Leslie had a dream in that night. God spoke to her and showed her in a vision where the oil in Israel is located. See, that's the big bugaboo. If you're an oil company looking for oil, <laughs> that's the question. Where do I drill and how deep do I drill? Well, since, was it 1953, there's been over 500 holes drilled in Israel. It's like a pincushion looking for oil. And at last check, which was several years ago, only seven of them were producing. And they were just little bitty dribbling wells, small. Okay? Yet, I found over 30 scriptures in the Bible that says in the last days, massive amounts of oil will be found in Israel. This ties to it. So Israel will give the Palestinians a state. But it will be a temporary measure to allow the Israelis time to strengthen the military. Then oil will be discovered in Israel. It will be massive amounts of oil. And I've talked about this, so I'm going to move on. Oil will make the Jews willing to fight for the land. Now, before I get to the next one, which is kind of important. Okay, so Michael Snyder apparently has some inside information in which he says that the Ark of the Covenant is about to come out. That Ark of the Covenant comes out. And by the way, I don't think that they will immediately move it, but that's, I, I've got, what, like a month ago, I put out two programs, or was it three, on the Ark of the Covenant. Go check it out, and it'll explain to you what I'm talking about. But that, that thing comes out, we're talking about war. War between Israel and Islam, and I'm happy to say Islam is going to lose. Israel is going to get back a lot of their land, possibly even all of the land, which stretches from the Nile all the way over to the Euphrates, including probably most all of Saudi Arabia. I won't go into that. I'll get off topic. All right, so oil will make the Jews willing to fight for their land. I also think that the Ark of the Covenant is probably part of that. That could cause the next one which is Israel and America, will go against most of the rest of the Arab world. What would make the Muslims just that quick attack Israel? That Ark of the Covenant, it be revealed. Maybe it's not moved at first. I don't think it will be moved at first. But all of a sudden Israel comes out and they say, we got the Ark of the Covenant. We have the Ten Commandments, which proves the Bible, which proves that we are the children of Israel, and which proves... Israel's land belongs to us, not the Palestinians. See, we have a problem. A war, a big bloody war. That's what this is talking about. Now, hang on, this is going to be important. I hope you stick with me. All right, then, now let me, let me look at the date. Okay, so this is April 15, 2002. Now, January 22, 2006. Again, this time she heard the audible voice of God say, Omer ushers in Palestinian state. Catastrophe. These are the headlines that I saw in the newspapers. Catastrophe hits America. One of America's greatest times of need. Israel refuses help to America. Israel has attacked America, sends troops. I'll keep reading. Chaos reigns as Americans protest help to Israel. Then she heard my voice quoting Dmitry Dudeman, 
the fall of America will start with an internal revolution. Now, <clears throat> number five, Israel has attacked America since troops. What would cause Israel to be attacked? And that's the point of today's program. That Ark of the Covenant comes out, <laughs> there is no question. All of the Arab world, because Israel is going to stand up and say this is our land. All of the Arab world will attack. As soon as they can pick up their weapons, they will attack immediately. But what we're about to show you today, it might be something more. Hang on. Now, let me refresh. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll get off track. But this is Chris Reed, March 25th, 2022. Once again, he was shown headlines. Number five and six say, Israeli and Palestinian two-state solution reached. That is splitting Israel. Then, major earthquake hits the middle of the United States. So that fits with two of these. So it's confirmed. Now let's go on. Then, to refresh your memory, Dimitri Dudman was told that the fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America. Started by the communists, some of the people will start fighting against the government. We may soon see that. Right now, in many areas, our, our nation is divided. I have to tell you, we're not the United States of America. We're the divided states of America. So here is some of the news. U.S. training and arming 5,000 Palestinian Authority troops in Jordan. What in the world is America doing on the side of the enemy? We're supposed to be Judeo-Christian America. We're supposed to be the nation that backs up the Jews that are in the Bible not the Palestinians. We're on the wrong side. The Biden administration is currently training and arming several thousand Palestinian Authority troops. Provides for the military training of 5,000 Palestinians in counterterrorism and commando tactics and will bring them 5,000 rifles. What are we doing? Additional, well, again, you know, the devil's in the White House, right? <clears throat> Additional anti-terror equipment to Palestinian cities and towns inside Samaria and other areas surrounding Hebron. The plan foresees the development of foreign forces, including U.S. military forces on the ground. The new program proposed by the Biden administration, the devil himself, provides guns and bullets and training to use them, creating a special force of armed PA security forces. During the course of the Palestinian terror or war 20 years ago, U.S. trained PA forces murdered 26 IDF soldiers in 2002 alone. The Palestinians learn how to use cell phones as remote detonation devices from their, look, American trainers. So Americans showed the Palestinians how to kill Americans. Problem. IDF chief, that's Israeli Defense Forces, Israel is ready to attack Iran and does not need U.S. help. <laughs> I, we're very close to a war. We're ready to act to, to act Iran. The Israeli army has the ability to strike both in the distant countries and near home. The IDF will enhance its capabilities for a preemptive strike on Iran and that such a strike would be overwhelming despite the geographical distance. Now, if the Ark of the Covenant comes out, there is no question there's war. But right now with the things they are saying, not doing necessarily, well, of course they're doing too, we are at the door of some kind of a war that could cause America or Israel to be attacked. We know how to attack alone. We are a sovereign nation that reserves the right to make its own decisions. It would be good to have the United States on our side, but it is not an obligation. These comments come amid growing tensions between Iran and Israel, with Iran accusing Israel of killing two of its military personnel in Syria last week and vowing to retaliate. Israel accuses Iran of pursuing nuclear weapons and claims Iran denies it. Next headline. Israel to attack Lebanon. Now, <laughs> this came out April 6th. Okay, so this has already happened now. Israel is going to retaliate for rockets fired from Lebanon. The Israeli attack is imminent. Israel will retaliate. They did. All Israeli military leave has been canceled. China is deeply concerned over the escalation of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Goes on to say, <clears throat> their intention is to respond, and now they have. At least 30 rockets were fired from Lebanon. Five of them reached Israel. Now, the numbers changed a little bit since then, but point is, there's a very real possibility that there's about to be war. 
and that war could be fulfilling one of those headlines. We get one of the headlines fulfilled, then we don't know whether it's a few years, several years, or many years before all of them are fulfilled, ending in the fall of America. Russia building troops in Syria to expel the U.S. Army. They openly say that there's about to be war with the U.S. And why not? America is attacking Russia right now via Ukraine. The Russian government has begun an unprecedented buildup of military inside Syria with the plan to, quote, expel the U.S. Army from our country. The Russians are inside Syria with the permission of the Syrian government, but... U.S. troops are in Syria without that permission. What are they doing there if they don't have permission to be there? The U.S. never left the country and, to this very day, maintains control over huge sections of northeast Syria. Why? Oil is there. Did you know that oil is what has brought on most of the wars since it was discovered? A couple of years ago, Russia provided video surveillance footage showing the U.S. allowing tanker trucks to come into Syrian oil areas, fill them up, and then go to Turkey, Iraq, and sell it. Uh, we're not supposed to be doing that. And Russia told them to stop. It goes on to say, Later came out the U.S. along Israel and Turkey were grabbing upwards of $30 million a month in Syrian oil. Now, who do you think is doing that? My guess is it's not really the American government. It's the devil behind the American government. I'd tell you the name of them, but that's why they took me off. <laughs> Last time, because I was telling who really owns these platforms. Russia is moving large numbers of troops, armor, artillery, and planes into northeast Syria to face the U.S. Army. Sound like war? Sounds like war to me. Russia is planning to expel the U.S. from Syria. Russia will tell the U.S. to get out of Syria by this date or be put out by force. But war, hear that word, war is on the table. Next headline, UN peacekeepers on Lebanon border ordered into bomb shelters. These are the kind of things you see before a war. Israel to attack Hezbollah in, the, in, the, in Lebanon. United Nations peacekeeper troops on the border between Lebanon and Israel have been ordered to take cover in bomb shelters immediately. It appears Israel, of course, Israel has already attacked at least a small one. It appears Israel is going to launch, now they have launched, the escalation of the decades long ago hostilities between Israel and well, the problem is all of this is over whose God is God. The Muslims say their God is Allah, and I think it's the third most holy place is the Al Aqsa Mosque, of which I have been outside of it. I didn't want to go into it. Several of the people did, but they had to take their shoes off to go in. I'm not taking my shoes off to any other God. I don't care about going into any other place of worship. Jesus is my God, and he's the only one that I will bow the knee to, and I won't just bow the knee or fall on my face and worship him. Palestinians have been restricted from accessing the mosque during the Muslim holy days of Ramadan. Males under 55 need a special permit to enter the house of worship. The governments of Egypt and Jordan have filed diplomatic pro protest over Israeli actions. Last night, rocket barrages. Now, at this point, we already know a lot of this has already happened. We already know the Jews went in and they uh, uh, attacked and arrested a bunch of people out of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is, it's enough for the Muslims to attack Israel right now. This war could be starting by the time you watch this. Russia Deputy Foreign Minister, United States escalate past Cold War is now in a hot hybrid war with Russia. This is not America saying it. America is saying, peace, peace, we don't want war. But they're doing things to start a war. The United States is playing with fire. This is the Russians talking. Now remember, the Russians have better missiles, bigger bombs, more of them. They, we already know they have the technology to defeat America. And the scripture says they will in one hour. Such great riches will come to naught. For in one hour, such great riches will come to naught. One hour. The new Cold War is all... This is the Russians talking. Let me back up. The United States is playing with fire and engaged in a hot hybrid war with Russia. Having already graduated from the Cold War stage, 
A Russian government minister has claimed, even going so far as to blame the U.S. for rising nuclear tensions. Well, we are the cause of it, or our evil government. The new Cold War is already over. This is the Russians. The Russians saying the Cold War is over. Accusing the United States of playing with fire by pushing world war to world towards nuclear war. And he insists Russians wish to avoid it. The comments just hours after Russia announced it had de deployed nuclear-capable missiles to the borders of NATO and Belarus and retrofitted Belarusian jets with the equipment to carry and drop nuclear bombs. You know, this is two guys in the parking lot. They both have put up the dukes. And someone behind them has, is handing them rocks. And someone over to the left is handing them knives. And someone to the right is handing them pistols. In other words, there's, there's about to be a big fight. While blame is generally laid at Russia's door for invading Ukraine, yes, that's because that's the way they plan it. But it's really the devil in people's heart. The minister insisted that it was in fact the U.S. that was pushing the world towards nuclear war and that Russia was the peaceful party trying to avoid such an exchange. Expressing this, there can be no winners in a nuclear war and it must not be unleashed. The U.S. is playing with fire. That's the, what, the third time they said that they're making fatal mistakes. I agree. I think it's evil in high places in America that are just like the vision that was shown to Dmitry, what, back 1997? That the Russian bear would wake up, grow bigger and stronger and more angry, until finally the people, when they did come against Russia, were like some men with sticks fighting off a giant, powerful, strong bear. Well, this bear is already strong and, po uh, and powerful. And it's growing in anger every day. We are doing everything wrong to Russia. Israeli-made cluster mortar shells were found in Ukrainian armed forces. Okay, so what does that mean? That means <clears throat> that Russia now has the authority and the reason to come down to attack Israel. Well, if you go to Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is talking about the Battle of Armageddon, which is, can be found in Revelation 19, if you want to know exactly where. They're saying that they're getting ready for war. Israel has been caught red-handed supply, red supplying deadly cluster munitions to Ukraine for the use against Russian forces. So now, not only NATO and all of America, but now Israel also has attacked Russia, and Russia can prove it. They have pictures of these. They probably have samples of them. And to the rest of the world, there was a prophecy that came out that said, as a matter of fact, the Bible says we sin not, for they have sinned against the Lord. Despite the fact that Israel says it does not supply weapons and ammunition to Ukraine, turns out they actually do. Apart from the fact that such ammunition has a high destructive power, goes on to tell about the ammunition, Israel is directly participating in the aggression against Russia. Let me read that again. Israel is directly participating in the aggression against Russia. So, the point of the program today is, are we about to see Israel attack America since troops? Are we about to see one of those headlines given to Leslie back in 2006? Are we about to see that fulfilled? We could. And that is going to cause a lot of people in all directions to finally begin to turn and listen to Prophecy Club because they're going to find out, well, you know, there's a lot of fancy ministries that have fancy words out there, but God is, has called Prophecy Club. What my idea. Matter of fact, maybe I should tell you this story. Well, which story? I've got several of them. I'll tell you one. So, okay, here, here's how Prophecy Club started. It was uh, June of 1993, and I can tell you the guy's name, and you probably know him because he is on another prophecy program on TV every day now. But at the time, we were in Topeka, Kansas, and he was heading up a, uh, well, here, here's the story. He called me. He says, uh, would you like to support a fellow that does a prophecy ministry on our program? Jack L. Frost by name. And I said, yeah, I might, I might. Um, how much does it cost? 
He said, cost $240 a month. And I said, well, I'll, I'll pay for it, which a large percentage of it, but I wouldn't pay for all of it. And he said, well, I'll call you right back then. So he called me back. He said, we well, you don't know, believe this. He said, I should ask you. And I had been writing the guy we had been talking. And so he knew that I was a prophecy. So he says, I should ask you. So how'd you like to start and do a 15-minute program on Bible prophecy on WREN in Topeka, Kansas? And I thought, well, I guess I could put on Demetri Dudeman's message. I don't know what else I would have to say, you know. But so I started with Demetri Dudeman's message, and it was June of 1993. And it grew from one city to another, to another, to another, until at one time we had, we were doing meetings in 40 different cities every month. About 5,000 people a month were attending our meetings. We were depositing about $600,000 a month in those days. 300000 of it was going to pay for radio and TV. At the time, I did not know, but at the time, we were the number two prophecy ministry in America. And it grew from there, and then it morphed and changed through the years until now, this is what we do. But the one thing we still do is carry Dimitri Dudeman's message. This is part of it. Part of the message that America is falling, and if... Israel is attacked, America will send troops, and that will be the first of seven newspaper headlines leading to the fall of America. Remember I read another one the other day that was talking about us being on a boat with fish already in our, our, our boat, and we were floating on mud, and there was fish jumping in out of the mud into our boat from all directions. And it said basically that when the financial difficulties hit, and they are now in the process, that that is going to cause a lot of people to start getting saved, specifically jumping into our boat with Jesus. So I have to think that we are right on the edge of some big, I started to say bad. It's bad for America, and it's bad for the flesh part of America, but it's good for the spiritual part. It's, matter of fact, just, just before I started up, I prayed, I said, Lord, you know, when, when I went to, when Leslie and I went to Saudi Arabia, let me, let me tell you, we were, we were driving about uh, four hours, and it's out in the desert, okay, and there's not very many places to stop and use the bathroom. So when they stop to use the bathroom, you best get out and go. Well, they stopped. We went out and used the bathroom. We got back in the car, and the five drivers had rolled out these little rugs and they were on their knees with their forehead touching the ground, facing east, facing Mecca. And I said to Leslie, I said, you know, these are such dear, sweet people. They work so hard trying to get eternal life. But the devil has lied to them. Just before I come on this program, I said, Lord, give me a way to reach people that have been lied to, that are working so hard to try to have eternal life, but they've been lied to, and they haven't found Jesus, which is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. No one comes to eternal life, eternal light, without Jesus. He is the door. He is the way. There was no other man under heaven where men might be saved. Jesus is the mediator. And I'll, and I'll ask again in front of you, Lord, give me a way to prove your word so that I can win a lot of people that want eternal life to Jesus that have been lied to, that are looking for life in all the wrong places. I'm going to show you something you've never seen or tasted before. I'm doing this impromptu. I just went out to my own bread machine and I pull this out. This is a loaf I made Saturday. This is my famous raisin cinnamon vanilla. This new loaf, the, the whole loaf would weigh about three pounds. Of course, I've already eaten about half of it. But I want to show you why you have never tasted this. Each one of these slices, you can see how thick it is. One of these slices is a meal. You eat one of these in the morning, one in the afternoon, and not only are you satisfied, you're, you're really satisfied. You're really happy. 
cinnamon, raisin, vanilla, and yes, at josephkitchen.com, you can get the recipe. This is an upgraded recipe that I plan to be putting out here as soon as I get a chance. But if you look close, those are raisins, cinnamon, and vanilla all whipped together. You put that into a toaster, put a little bit of butter on that, and, well, it doesn't last long at church. Uh, as a matter of fact, they pass by all of the nice donuts and all of the other sweet garbage to get something that's really good for them. Now, what I would suggest you do is start making your own bread, whether you've already got Joseph's Kitchen or whether you haven't, get it. Now, here's what you do. You go to josephskitchen.com. Two things. One, you order a machine package. That's the mechanicals to make it. In other words, the grinder that takes the wheat berries, turns it into flour, which you put into the bread machine with six other ingredients, push a button, two hours and 20 minutes later, you have a nice hot loaf of whole wheat bread. It won't look like this because <laughs> this one has raisin cinnamon and, uh, and honey in it. Anyway, extra honey. And the next thing you want to do is decide how much food you want to have. You want to have six people one year, four people one year, two people one year, are just enough for one person. All of that is at the price of around $1,000 per person. Get you some homemade whole wheat bread. Why have you never tasted this? Because the grocery stores cannot and will never be able to offer this because in about seven to 10 days after you break the wheat berry, it starts going bad. Now, I know that I'm going to have to eat this in the next seven to 10 days, but I also know it's probably not going to last more than three or four days. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life, and I can't guarantee this. Uh, I can't say it legally, but uh, let's put it this way. I've, I've been taken off of my, uh, well, I've been taken off of my high blood pressure pills, and the doctor said that I have low cholesterol now, cut my cholesterol pill in half. And the only thing I can say is over the last year, I started eating whole wheat bread. So there it is, whole wheat bread, josephskitchen.com. Terry Saka, corner, a stone, asset, metals.com. So why should people go online or call you today? Seymour Hirsch, an amazing investigative journalist, laid out the case that the United States is the one that blew up the Nord Stream pipelines, hurting our very own allies. That is a nation that is desperate because their currency is on the verge of losing reserve status. That's not good for a United States dollar and why we better be protected. Terry Saka, CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Give him a call or go online today. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Next is, I'll send you to EMPShield.com. If you use the promo word prophecy, you get a $50 discount. What is that? Well, it looks like this. This is the one that goes into a car, okay? And you put the red wire to the red side of the battery. You put the black wire to the black side of the battery and the green one attaches to the body of the car. Then you peel it off right back here. Just peel that off, stick it inside of the, 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 the engine compartment of your car. And the whole point is when the electricity goes off or when some kind of a suitcase nuclear, or nuclear device goes off, this is supposed to be able to stop that device from destroying every computer chip in your car. Because if every computer chip is destroyed in your car these days, you couldn't possibly replace them all. Throw the car away. So, empshield.com, promo code PROPHECY. Leslie Johnson had a prophecy back in 2011. She says, the Lord says there's going to be something put into the water supply in many cities of the nation. People will begin to get sick, some will die. Get a good, reliable water filter. You will not be able to trust the tap water or the bottled water. You must get something to filter the water you are going to need. That's back in 2011. So if you want it, we suggest you go to prophecyclub.com. You click right here where it says Berkey's. This is what it looks like. Currently, all Berkey's are in stock. The one I have is this guy right here. It's the crown. It has eight filters. I recommend you get as much as you can afford and also recommend you get some extra filters. That's at prophecyclub.com. 